I'm Terry with Lacrosse Technology, and this is the WS1913 Professional Weather Station. Uh, the actual number 1913 TWC, indicating that it's branded by the Weather Channel. Uh, three parts to this, um, outside of mounting uh, materials. We have the thermal hydro sensor, which gives us temperature and humidity. An anemometer for wind speed, which will actually plug into this sensor. And we have our display unit. And the first thing we're going to do is take the protective cover off that display. And now we move the display to the side because the other two units are going to demand our attention first. In setting this up, we are going to start by hooking up our wind sensor. And because I'm just doing it on my five foot table here, uh, we're not going to uncoil all 32 feet of cord. The top pulls off. And the sensor simply plugs into this jack. Once we've got that plugged in, we're going to put our batteries in. This sensor uses two AA batteries. We're looking for alkaline only, please. And we're looking for date codes that are showing a fresh battery. What that basically means is take the current year, add six. Any year older than that should not be used. When you mount this sensor, you want to make certain it's mounted upright. And when you mount the wind sensor, the cup should be down. We'll move this about five feet away or so for the initial setup. Anywhere in the five to ten foot range is good. And we come to our display unit. The display unit, real simple to put batteries in. We just pull the cover up. Okay, we load a pair of C batteries, again using the same freshness rules, name brand, into our display unit. Notice everything lit up. We had a brief display of the uh, firmware code and the system is looking and has found the outdoor temperature and humidity. Uh, what we're going to do is set the system parameters. We use the set and plus button for the majority of this. We press the set button and hold it down. The time will turn into the letters LCD with a flashing number. That number tells us how the density of the display is going to be. Using the plus button, we can make the display denser as far as the way things look. And using the min-max button, we can back that off. Pressing set once again. Okay, the hour is flashing. We use the plus button to adjust that and we're watching for AM and PM. If there's no letters to the left of the hour, it's AM. When we get to PM, a small PM will show up. And we're going to set it for a few minutes after 2. We press the set button once again, the minutes flash, and the plus button changes our minutes. We press the set button once again. We have the time, the 12H flashing. That gives us the option of 12 hour time or by pressing the plus button, 24 hour military style time. We'll put it back in 12 hour time. Pressing the set button once again, the year is flashing. It's 2011, so we'll use the plus button to set that. The month will flash the next time we press set button, and we'll set this for June. Pressing the set button once again, the date is flashing and we'll set this for the 5th of June. Pressing set once again, we have a an option of Fahrenheit or by pressing the plus button, Celsius temperatures. I'll go back to Fahrenheit. Pressing set once again, how do I want to read my wind speed in miles per hour or the plus button, meters per second or the plus button once again, kilometers per hour. We'll put it back in miles per hour with the plus button. Pressing set once again. How do I want my rainfall to show? If you bought the rainfall sensor for this, which is an option, you can choose with the plus button inches or millimeters. If you've not bought that option, there's no need to set it, and we'll use the set button to go to pressure. Do we want our pressure to show in inches of mercury, commonly used in the U.S., or in hectopascals, commonly used by much of the rest of the world? I'm going to put it back in inches of mercury with the plus button. 
Pressing set once again allows us to adjust the relative pressure. You can find out the relative pressure at your location by calling your local weather bureau or by going online to a number of different sites that show that. To raise the number, you use the plus button. If you hold that plus button down for a bit, it'll start quickly counting. To lower it, we use the min-max button. And again, if you hold it down, the count will go faster. Once you've set that relative pressure, press the plus button once, or the set button once again, and says, okay, how do you want your alarms? For instance, if the pressure goes up by 0 0.09 inches of mercury in an hour, or goes down by that amount, up or down, do you want an alarm set, or do you want a different number? You can use the plus and hit min max to change the number. Most people leave it. Pressing set once again, what if we have a pressure drop of more than 15 hundredths of an inch? Do we want an alarm or not? Again, we can change that simply with the plus and min max buttons. The AOF determines whether or not that alarm is going to sound. Using the plus button, we'll turn that to A on. Um, that's an alarm that will definitely wake you up if it's in the same room. Many people leave it off for that reason. Pressing the set button once again, we're back to normal operation. Some of the manuals that ship with this, depending on which uh, particular uh, run in the factory it was, do have an error in it about mounting this sensor. It wants you to mount it facing east. Um, the direction is not important on this sensor because this sensor obviously doesn't have a wind vane for wind direction. So uh, don't be confused by that. This simply needs to be mounted on a mast in the air a few feet above the house uh, or above the highest trees to be accurate. Um, you don't need to worry about a direction facing though.